Hello everyone, I am Tacit and today I'm going to be going over the Gems of War Owl Be Back event in which the Owl Rider is added to the game, so let's get into that. Owl Rider, pretty much 100% useless. The Owl is better than the Owl Rider itself. Uh, there's a troop, uh, 9 mana cost I believe it is, yellow troop. Uh, ends up destroying all the purple and then creating seven, I believe, of a chosen color. Uh, plus, it has like a plus one on its purple. That thing is way, 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 way better than the Owl Rider itself, which is kind of odd. But yeah, she deals uh, damage to the weakest enemy. Uh, and if the enemy dies, it destroys all purple. Uh, the problem is the other troop does that 100% chance. And the only real benefit it has is it does a small amount of damage. Though the fact that it's required to have to get a kill for that to even occur is very bad meaning you're barely getting just like double her damage in her mana uh, and that's barely even anything given that she is 20 percent too so not really going that well the only slight good thing about her is uh air link plus of course immune to mana drain silence fairy fire and entangle but that is not worth having a completely useless ability so yeah this thing is near useless won't ever really be used and uh, even for the 40 souls that it gains this week for using in a team probably not even worth doing that either because you'd just be better off just using a standard soul farming team so unfortunately not much here maybe just get it for the arcane trait stones of course uh, but that is about it. Earlier on in the game, you'd probably want to get something like the Ranger. Later on, probably a Grapple Pot, so you can build a nice uh, four times uh, Goblin team. Uh, but anyways, let's go into the other stuff. As far as Event Keys, even though she is useless, the Event Keys are slightly okay. Uh, nothing too over the top, though there is a chance to get the Mythic of uh, Yasmin's Chosen. Uh, surprisingly, the Epics within the drop pool right now are uh, some of the best things that are available right now. Uh, of course, there are things like Selvany Moor and Gloomleaf for the Legends, uh, both of which are kind of average. Selvany Moor is mainly used for entangling. Gloomleaf has the highest score reflect in the game, but even at its 50%, still not really that viable. But uh, the main thing you would end up picking here is actually uh, Green Seer and Fire Stroll, uh, both of which are really good at creating a lot of green. In the case of Fire Stroll, it doubles the green. And in case of the Green Seer, it converts a chosen color to green at 10 mana cost too, so it's just as cheap as uh, that of a Valkyrie, so very nice. Uh, but since they're both epics, could probably pick it up uh, in about 10, 20, maybe 30 event keys or so, assuming you get about average luck or so. But uh, yeah, definitely nice pickups if you haven't gotten already. Really good green generators. If you don't have a green generator, can definitely easily uh, get one this week. As far as the Soul Forge, there is uh, another nice uh, pickup over here. Under purple, if you haven't already gotten it, there is Sunbird. Uh, Sunbird is insanely good damage. Uh, plus, it ends up getting a Firestorm uh, automatically every single time it casts which is uh, very nice. Uh, only troop that kind of really has that kind of uh, concept going for it, where it just keeps killing itself off and constantly uh, providing a storm. It basically, even though it doesn't say it on its ability, has the ability on top of everything it already does to also create a firestorm since its final trait would do that anyways. The other decent thing that you might end up picking up if you were trying to get a sunbird is you'll probably pick up a flame troll too, which not only works decently with uh, the sunbird, but also uh, works with basically anything that needs a lot of red. It doubles all the reds on the board plus three, as all the trolls do, pretty standard for uh, any troll. As far as any mythics that are available, there is Wardbreaker, one of the highest damage sources in the game, also uh, the highest uh, mana cost in the game, but that's mainly because it has a lot of mana generation, a lot of damage, and decent traits, has immune to devour, so no instant kills on that, uh, has the 25% score reflect, which isn't really too over the top, but the main thing that makes it decent is the gain 4 to any skill on extra turns, so uh, you can end up stacking up quite a bit of stats, particularly if they end up hitting on magic because every magic buff is essentially 16 additional damage uh, that he will be able to do to the enemy, assuming all four of them are alive. But that's pretty much everything with the Soul Forge uh, so far this week. As far as actual event stuff, if we go under the event, we have 10% to all Forest of Thorns, as well as 10% to all Elves. Unfortunately, no 10% to Elementals, which is what the invasions are this week, and we'll be going over teams for that in a moment. Uh, of course, like I mentioned, use Owl Rider and PvP or Explorer to gain 40 souls. Could try throwing something into Explore, not really worth uh, much to do it in PvP. Uh, there is most likely going to be a Gnome event uh, later this week, so maybe just throwing her at the end of like maybe a Sunbird Rowan uh, Firebomb team may be okay, though I personally will not be doing that while farming the Gnomes, because finding more Gnomes would probably outweigh the 40 souls every single time, but who knows. Then again, that's like two Gnomes right there. I mean, one Gnome right there in like three battles, so... <laughs> The gnomes tend to drop horrible stuff sometimes. Uh, with this uh, event right now, all you have to do is kill reds and explore. Uh, some kingdoms that are really good for this are things like uh, Wild Plains, Pride Lands, 
Adana, basically any kingdom, uh, Bla uh, Blade Lands, uh, basically any kingdom with like seven, eight plus reds in it. Uh, also keep in mind, uh, since the Treasure Gnome event should be occurring this Friday and for the entire weekend, it would uh, make a lot of sense to completely ignore this event until pretty much the weekend, or at least until Friday, mainly because the gnomes, um, you'll be farming a bunch of gnomes then, and you'll be get a lot more rewards for trying to do this than trying to do it now. Uh, on top of that, the gnomes, of course, are also red, and I did end up getting a gnome in one of these 11 kills, and it does indeed count as an event gem, even if it just pops into your random explore battle. So yeah, just hunt, them, hunt down all the reds you need probably during this weekend, since you'll also get the gnome, gnome rewards for doing so assuming that it does occur this friday and yeah it's pretty much all you'll need to do for that pretty easy event for the most part and you'll get to farm gnomes while doing so uh, other than that uh let's go and invasion so we got the invasion going on i believe it's actually taking place in adana it seems like it's themed on a different place every single time i say that because we're up against uh four adana troops here which normally wouldn't really get randomly generated like that i don't know maybe we just got lucky slash unlucky in that regard but anyways uh, this is what I'm going to be running for the initial time. I'm not sure if I'll be switching out, but I did want to try for the first time ever using no hero weapon just to kind of see what would happen. But I'm going with Iron Bark, which is the guy you get through uh, gems this week. If you want to go and get him, he does three times skull damage to the towers or more. If you get him, even more packs. And he, of course, does a three times damage to the thing plus a random entangle, which isn't really going to do much. Uh, main thing he has that's going to be quite useful is other than his damage, of course, the 33% uh, skull reduction. So he'll be a partial... Uh, tank for us. Other than that, we have a Dark Troll, Flame Troll loop, a Dark Troll for the uh, doubling of the purple, Flame Troll for the doubling of the red, and of course I mentioned he's also available in the little uh, crafting thing if you want to go get him that way, and you just keep looping back and forth right there. I'm using a Infernus and last slot, though you could use really any really heavy uh, damage source. One other thing to keep in mind uh, that you might want to do this week, since every single troll is an elemental giant, uh, and you can only use elementals this week within invasions. It could be a good idea to go and use your hero class set as a titan hero class, and you'll be able to give 50% mana uh, not only to yourself, of course, but also to every troll you put on your team. So uh, do keep in mind you could go like double troll, mang, and like one other troop uh, that's an elemental and just kind of go down that way, and that might end up uh, working out pretty decently. Uh, given that this is uh, invasions, there are a lot more team compositions that can be used compared to that of raids. As you can see right here, uh, when we had the opportunity to do it in uh, raids last week, we had like, what, 12 troops? Not even, about that many. Uh, and if we go here, we have uh, 8, 16, 24, uh, not all of them are viable, obviously, but still, uh, 32, uh, 30, 40, maths, uh, 48, <laughs> uh, 56, and that only went down one, right? Well, about 40. I mean, wow. <laughs> good, really good math. About 60 is how many we have to choose from, and that's not even counting everything that you get to use off your hero, of course, you get any option of weapon there. Of course, there's only like a few really viable ones, like Mang, Mountain Crusher, and uh, stuff like that, maybe Dawnbringer. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much a very large selection. Definitely a lot of things. You have all six trolls to use, have a lot of different utilities, even have Sunbird for a bunch of damage, have our wands, uh, stuff like that. As far as one really, really cheap team, I figured I'd throw one, throw one together for anyone that might have absolutely nothing to use. Uh, there are so many, oops, that's not where you go. There are so many elementals that I figured we scrapped this together. Uh, this obviously wouldn't get too far, but still, if you had absolutely nothing, this could be within your reach of actually building it, and you wouldn't even need to spend any gems. It is a uh, lava elemental, uh, sunbird, uh, Rowan, and the fire lizard. Uh, lava elemental for the 50% score reduction and the slight board control and damage. Sunbird for the pure damage, plus it keeps reviving itself, so even if it keeps getting hit with skulls, as long as they're not doing uh, however much your HP is, you will be able to survive that hit and then just keep casting over and over again. So if you could get all of your mana back before they hit you again, you could just keep perpetually staying alive on it, which is quite nice. Rowan simply for damage, so if you happen to have it as one upgrade to this team, uh, well, actually, there's a lot of upgrades you can do this the same, like replacing that with Mang and stuff. But uh, one upgrade, if you do have it, is replace it with uh, Helinda from um, uh, like two weeks ago. That one uh, giant, the green, blue one. It has a summon on it. It's actually the only elemental, surprisingly, was summon. We go under uh, elemental and go under summon. Several will come up, but none of them are actually real summons. Uh, the only one is uh, Hindula Frost Crown. And then these other ones are actual summons. They're actual, st uh, they're storm summons, not like real troop summoning. So if you needed a summon option, this is the actually the only troop 
during this current event that would uh, work for doing that. And we have the Fire Lizard in hopes that we could get a little bit of red uh, looping or simply just red into the Sunbird and Lava Elemental for them to utilize it. Obviously wouldn't get too far, but if you had no options, pretty cheap, ultra rare, ultra rare. Rowan, which is an epic, but you get it for free from Forest of Thorns Kingdom and a rare. So uh, manageable, easy to obtain stuff for the uh, most part. Anyways, let's go ahead over to some PVP. And uh, let's get into um, showing a couple like Forest of Thorns related teams. Here is a uh, Forest Troll, Glitter Claw, Green Seer, Yasmin Chosen. The entire team is Forest of Thorns with the exception of the Glitter Claw. Though if we truly wanted to keep it fully Forest of Thorns, we could go and maybe replace this out with our Archer Hero class using um, basically anything, maybe Dawnbringer or whatever we want to throw there. Uh, do keep in mind, uh, Archer Hero Class, if you haven't already gotten it, you get it from completing out the entirety of Forest of Thorns Kingdom and then doing the bonus quest line. It uh, has 20% this week because it's both Forest of Thorns and Elf, which are the two 10% bonuses. So uh, yeah, you get quite a bit of stats that way. So pretty nice to uh, maybe try utilizing that. But anyways, let's go into this battle with uh, this team right here. Uh, main thing we're gonna do is rush up the uh, Glitter Claw Get that down and see what we can uh, pretty much do from there. Actually, Green Seer Rush might be a little bit better this time around. So we'll see if we can actually go and get ourselves that. We'll try for the purple to purple. I actually got it too. Very nice. Uh, this battle is either going to be an instant win or instant lose. I say instant lose uh, mainly because he has a uh, really heavy green troop there that could easily counter, counter us. Famine. Uh, we don't have any immune to mana drain not only that but he will just go uh and one shot drain our entire team get all the greens that we created and yeah it'll just backfire uh very very hard so hopefully that won't happen looks like we got the loop going and once you get the loop going it is a pretty good win unless it just uh wants to miss out of nowhere okay apparently it's fun to do that again uh it never wants to go right does it well, let's go throw that down. Luckily, that hit the best thing it could have. The one thing that's actually going to have the capability of killing us. And ideally, Yasmin will never miss, though she loves to miss every single time. Uh, it's one of the reasons I don't actually use her too much. Uh, even when it feels like she has like the best chance of ever hitting, she just doesn't. A lot of troops are like that, where it, the, anything that basically puts gems onto the board uh, feel like that sometime. Uh, but she feels like it almost always. So we'll go throw that down. Well, something that would give us full man. I'm really surprised that it didn't. I guess we'll just throw this onto like yellow or something here. Probably should have done it on something we didn't actually use. Oh well. Uh, that should land. Of course it doesn't. And we'll go and... Well he has barrier so I can't go and uh, use our glitter claw because that's just going to do nothing at this point. I guess we'll go take ourselves a purple hope for a skull which we didn't get but at least we had the chance. And from here, I guess we could try working up this mana to full. I don't have any takes that are really going to help us, so we'll just take a brown, I guess. Did I just move that into place? Yes, I did. Okay, so we'll go and grab ourselves, I guess, the last of his mana. We would need a brown for that, so never mind. Can't go do that. Still don't have any Glitter Claw either. Oh, wait, yeah, we can. <laughs> Hello, Blinking Brown. It's just sitting right there, so we'll go and double the green. Um, let's see, will that hit? Wow, the one that doesn't even look like it'll hit will hit. If the ones that look like they will hit won't hit. So we'll go and uh, throw this down just to go and get the Fairy Fire back on him. Of course, Fairy Fire increases the amount of damage you can do by 50%. And Yasmin keeps getting additional damage per every Entangle that's on the opposing team as well. You can keep stacking those up like uh, crazy. Uh, anyways, I figured we'd do at least one Forest of Thorns team. Uh, or, you know, four times. And uh, I figured we'd throw this together just for fun. Uh, somewhat similar to the previous team, though a little bit more towards trying to fit an owl rider into it in some way, shape, or form. Really, really hard to try to put that thing into a team uh, because there just isn't really any purpose for it whatsoever. As I mentioned, I didn't actually show it, I don't believe yet, but um, the reason why owl rider is so bad is there's already an owl that is superior to it, the snowy owl. Uh, oh, it's only 8 mana cost. Look at that. It's not even 9 mana cost. It destroys all purple gems at 100% chance. Uh, and then create seven gems of a chosen color. Uh, this is actually a really unique uh, board control uh, capability that it has. And uh, only does it for eight mana. It's uh, one of the best comments in the game, actually. And yeah, it has immune to entangle, immune to freeze, and that purple link there. Which doesn't really help much since it destroys the purple, which means it rarely ever gets to use that. But still, it is superior to a owl rider, uh, despite being a common. So yeah, there's pretty much no re reason in most situations to use an owl rider. The only slight niche instance you would use that for is if you for whatever reason needed like an alternative purple mana generation troop for when you're up against like four times mana drain or something who knows but that's the only real benefit she has really is her immune to mana drain plus the uh, plus one yellow that she has everything else about her pretty much useless so we'll go and move the blue over i'm uh, trying to get forest troll up uh pretty much every single team whenever you're running heavy mana generators uh just to start getting the mana generators running and then you can go from there 
Uh, so we'll grab this double green. Please don't miss. There we go. Uh, so we have everything at our disposal. Uh, I'm actually using Fiery Claws right now. Probably should have switched that out. He only has one blue at the moment. Uh, of course, you'd kind of want them to have a little bit more than that uh, before throwing a weapon like this at them. Uh, but of course, as I mentioned too, using your uh, Archer Hero class has 20% this week. The reason is because it's both Forest of Thorns and Elf. So it gets the full 20% uh, bonus. So yeah, you could use that with Dawnbringer and stuff this week, get quite a bit of damage that way. You can use it with other various uh, green weapons that you might have laying around. I tried choosing one that most people would actually have. Uh, well, I shouldn't say most. I think it's 40 red, 40 green. So, uh, But I, I didn't want to use one of the other ones that was slightly better. That uh, was one of those old event weapons that most people don't have. So even with 1d% bonus, I know it's only ultra rare, but still... Uh, it does not have the damage to go kill that. So hopefully after this Yasmin will have enough. I was going to say, if you didn't have enough after that, there's a problem. So let's go remove all the purple. The other problem with this too is what if we don't actually need to remove purple at a given time? Like right now, we actually don't need it. It doesn't look like we get anything from it. Now, do we? Can't even tell. Okay, we'll throw it and see what happens. Uh, do I take that green? Actually, let me double green before I go and do that. And now we'll go for it, I think. So we'll go and uh, clear that out. It'll automatically hit the weakest. I don't know why I was about to go target it. Uh, but of course, that's what it says. We'll go and throw ourselves down the uh, Yasmin, which we ended up getting from the purple that it destroyed. Uh, oh, he's going to get a summon. But there's not a single thing I could do to go stop that. So we're going to try to get a blue right there. Okay, that's a red. That is not a blue. And he gets a bunch of extra turn. Oh, hey, that's funny. He got... Um, you know what? I wonder if he actually has a boost ratio. I want him to cast. Because I've never seen him summoned before. Curious if he actually gets the boost ratio for everything that has already died. Which is only one troop. But still. Let's see what number he hits. I'm really curious now. Okay. We get to test this. What does he get? Go get a double green. Uh, I've never actually seen that. Obviously we've seen him used before and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, very rarely. But still. Uh, never actually seen him summoned and get a cast well. So we'll go and take another green there. It's only going to be him left. So how many kills was that? That was four. So yeah, that was four, right? Oh, but now he might hit something that's too weak. Hopefully he hits like Yasmin or the other one. But yeah, he sh uh, I don't know how much he should do, actually. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, yes, we do. We know that he should do four then. So that should be... If it got the boost ratio from the initial one, that should be 105 damage. So hopefully he hits Yasmin or other thing. Let me slow down the speed so we can see it. Oops. Because I'm not streaming, so there's no way to go back. You guys can go back, but I won't be able to. <laughs> Uh, let's see. We'll go move that over. I need to not kill him. Um, yeah, that's not enough damage, right? Yeah, he's not blue. He doesn't have any blue on him. So we'll go throw that at him. Now, what does he hit? He should hit, well, what did I say? Like 105? Something 100. Ah, oh, no! He went for the wrong one! Now we'll never know. Okay, I just have to kill him out. The world may never know. Okay, anyways, we'll go and just kill him normally now. Uh, it wasn't really that important. So you never know when you might need that random tidbit of information in like a guild war battle. Uh, but that's match. And anyways, of course we get the extra 40 souls for using the little owl. Is it worth throwing it in? No. Uh, if you're going to do anything to try to throw it into an owl, basically go to a kingdom that might have a little bit more red, like Wild Plains, which had uh, eight red troops in it, despite only giving us one. And the uh, easiest way to go do this is to go get a standard explorer team and pretty much just plop that owl in there and get your uh, extra souls this way. It's about the only really viable way. Do this while farming gnomes this weekend uh, when it's the actual gnome vault event when they're all more common. But we'll go throw the uh, fire bomb down here. Get that down. Get that right into a sunbird if we can. No. Uh, we'll go take that then. Didn't get the purple drop or at least not the extra turn purple drop which we wanted and somehow he's still alive. Uh, we'll take this purple, try to get him to take that red. He doesn't go for it. Is that turn just sitting there? Probably. Uh, we'll go move that over. Uh, leaf skull? Leaf skull. There we go. And we get 40 extra souls for that, as you can see at the end of the battle right there. Uh, so that wasn't too much slower than what it would normally be, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see if it's worth it. I guess we could accumulate quite a bit of souls if we're farming up the gnomes. Yeah, I, I guess we'll keep it there. It's not that much slower. But anyways, guys, that will wrap it up for this video. If you still have any other questions about the event or anything else in Gems of War, invasions, or all the, any of that kind of stuff, uh, let me know, and I'll make sure to get around to it. Anyways, guys, I hope you all have a wonderful week. I will see you all later, and goodbye.